So here's the bird bone dry now, as you can see. I'm going to add in those extra black areas that I accidentally painted over. And I just wanted to show you my, my water is now looking a bit dirty. Okay, that's clean water and that's dirty water. So when I come to do the coloured beak and everything, I'm not going to be dipping my brush in this water. I'd recommend, you know, that you swap it, change it very often. That's what you want to be working with most of the time, especially for picking up clear water to mix. It's okay to give your brushes a swirl in that generally, but then pick up clear water every time. So to put those black areas in, I'm going to go back to my puddle of, of black that I mixed and add a bit more strength to it. So I'm adding more burnt timber, more French, uh, more French ultramarine, because I want a strong shadow now to make it look like he's in the jungle and the sun is out. So in this next step I'm, step, I'm going to show you how to just paint wet on dry. So the paper is bone dry now. Right? So to add this shadow that you can see here, let's just pop that in. Oh, actually, no, I'll get the, the, the piece that I, I forgot to put in. Oh, I painted over more, should I say. So that's like that. I lost part of his undercarriage, I think. So let's paint that in. So this is darker. It's a darker black. A darker dark because it's under the sunlit feathers, which we wanted to show off by lifting them out. So we need some contrast for them to look brighter. Actually, I could make him a little bit deeper like that, perhaps cut that curve a di bit more deeply, yeah that's better, and to there, and his feathers go up and then come back down, All right, so the cast shadow now will be, I'm loading up my brush again because I want this shadow to be very strong, and it casts a shadow on his bottom tail feathers, like that. And I'm chipping around the top feathers, making them making V's out of them. So that they look more pointy because of the shadow underneath. So some very strong dark shadows on there now. There's another shadow underneath this feather. So follow the curve. If there aren't strong shadows on an image that you've got, you might need to sort of make them up and just imagine where there would be strong shadows if the sun were out. Because most paintings need some strong contrast to come alive and you need to use poetic license sometimes and just imagine them. So I'm adding a dark shadow on the shadow side of that spine that would be lifting out of the feather and I'm just using a bit of artistic license and popping a little separator and tapering it away for that third feather. So his feathers are now looking a little bit more like they're lifting off the body and we could just do some strokes like that and I want the hard edge there didn't I? to contrast with this soft blurry edge there. So this now, as I say, is black, wet paint on dry paper. And I'll just do some strokes down. Just a bit of texture. I don't want to overwork the wings. 
just to give it a bit of life there. I'm going to lose that because that's dragging my eye. All right. So while we've got this black on the paint, the brush, let's just go back in and give his fine head a little bit more black emphasis. I'm not going right to the edge of that fuzzy yellow. I'm just staying on the outer edge of his head. So I'm leaving a little margin of a few millimetres for that yellow to bleed, black to bleed into the yellow. Same again with the beak here. I'm putting this additional black right in the centre of the blurry black application that I did before. So I'm getting definition without losing the soft edge. And this gives your painting a bit of, you know, a bit of a lift. It gives it layers and the viewer always has more to see then. So while I've got us zoomed in on the eye, let's get a few uh, little sort of crescents going around the eye because that's how we build the eye shape by having a few little arcs, you know, to set the eye into the face. So sap green. My paint, my palettes, I'm running out of space here, aren't I? What I would do is uh, just wipe it down, really. That's what I should do. Add some, add some yellow with some green. I should have added the yellow first on the palette. Always start mixing with your palest colours and then add the darker ones to them. So that's a palish green-yellow. So this starts to tie in with the beak colour which is a lot of green and just a few little arcs there and while we've got some of this green on I'm just going to drag it down like that and let's have some of it Just butting up against the orange, just for a bit of strength there. Just for a bit of uh, contrast in the beak. And then I'm dragging it all along the top of the beak, but avoiding that highlight that we worked so hard to lift out. This is just giving the beak a little bit more colour and a bit more strength. So going back to the eye, I'm going to rinse my size 3 brush and pick up some black. Now I need this black to be I'm a bit close there. I need this black to be not so runny because it's a small area. So I'm adding a little bit more of the neat brown and a bit more of the neat blue, the French ultramarine and the burnt umber. This is my size 3 brush. So to paint the eye, we're just going to make a black circle. I'm going to leave a little chink in the top left hand area as a little highlight. And maybe leave the skinniest crescent in the right hand part of the eye as well. So it's a very fine crescent there. Just making his eye a little bit wider. And then we've got these little black chunks of me, these sort of funny markings. Again I don't want these to be too perfect. Some of them can be a little bit um, paler or smaller than others. And that separator line can go in 
while we've got this black on the brush I'm going to make it a bit thicker in places like that and then taper it away to nothing taper it away as it gets near the head let's just take it very finely, very lightly down to the tip a few more little ones coming along there right, what I'm going to do now is I've rinsed that size 3 brush and I've wipe the handle on the hairs and I'm just going to pick up a tiny little drop of water and I've scraped that off on the side of the jug and then I'm going to go very briefly and gently over that black line just to smudge it and dissolve it very slightly so that it doesn't look too stuck on rinse my brush again, flick it just leave a tiny little bit of moisture on there not a blob, just a tiny bit because a blob will make everything run and I'm just dissolving the, t the edges of those little triangles, can you see? so that they just fade in and blend in with the previous wash a little bit more so they're not too st st they don't stick out too much so the eye I think needs a little bit of in this green, we need it to be a little bit darker. So let's use some of our dark colour, this bluey brown, and just mix it into that. You see, it just gives it a slightly greyed green, darker green. And then, we can zoom in a bit more, without losing focus. I'm going to start putting some right up next to the black and then finer and finer and again right sitting on top of the black so that it beds the eye into the plumage and then a finer arc and a finer one and then I'm going to press some tissue paper And some green came off just to sort of lessen that a little bit. Okay, so his beak is looking nice now. Okay, now I'm going to just pop a little bit of permanent magenta. I think his tip of his beak needs a little bit of polish now. Let's have a bit of a darker touch of it there and on the tip like that like that okay and I'm going to rinse my size 3 brush again rinse my brush that's the dirty brush that's the dirty water sorry now in the clear water give it a rinse now and I'm going to flick it, flick the brush and there's a tiny little bit of moisture on that area and I'm going to blend that permanent magenta line away like so so that's blending a line away in watercolour. So let's see how he's looking now. I think I like him better than the original one myself. I think his beak is a bit nicer. So to do his little feet, let's just zoom in. I don't want to make this video too long, um, so his feet will be just the grey that's left on the palette, which was that blue-brown. We'll pop up is a paler grey than his feathers are. So 
So let's just get some grey on. And this will dry paler than it looks as well. Watercolour always goes a bit paler. Some colour on there. And they've got scaly feet, haven't they? Two cans. And it's worth getting some detailed photos of feet off the internet. You know, so you can really see. We're not going to go as detailed as that, but it get, gives you the idea of the scales overlapping. So that you've got, you're better informed about what you're painting. So there's some grey on. Now, still with this small brush, let's go for a slightly more viscous, slightly less runny black. The same colour, but less less runny. And straight away, while it's still moist, we're going to drop in some shadow on the underside and on the right-hand side of these scaly feet. This will be in shadow, so underneath, just give the idea of it um, being in shadow where the light can't get you know, right down to it. So we've got some shadows on now. Rinse my little brush again, flick that, and this little brush has got a tiny bit of moisture in there. I'm not going to wipe that moisture off, it's very small. And then just dab and soften the ends of the little marks you made in the scaly foot. Just gently and that dissolves and softens the end of your brush stroke and lets the mark look smaller, uh, look less, look less, um, less hard, makes it look softer. And I think that's it. I'm going to leave it there. The branch would basically be a case of wetting it all and dropping in some grey. That's all I did on the branch. Uh, and I dropped in a bit of green. So as you can see, it's a very simple grey wash with a bit of green. So I'll leave you to try and complete that using the techniques that you've, you've used today. So if you've got any questions, you can send them to me um, in the comments box or via Alison Fennell Art at hotmill.com and just soften in one last thing I can't resist one last thing I'm just going to soften the eye a little bit more so I'm using a very slightly damp size 3 brush Taking some of the black out of the centre of the eye and then depositing it in arcs around the eye. So I'm just softening and softening and softening that edge so it just sits in a little bit more gently. And there's our toucan. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you like my videos and my way of teaching, please subscribe to me. That helps my channel a lot. And if you've got any questions at all, email me at alisonfennellart at hotmail.com and I get back to you normally in the same day. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.